we're going to talk about the connect checker analysis. This tool allows us to check the connection, the continuity, whether it's G0, G1, G2, or G3 of curves and surfaces. As I select the tool, you'll notice that it has, it looks like quite a lot of information available to us. You'll notice that there's the source and there's a target. For this, we don't have to worry too much about this at the moment. Um, you'll notice under, underneath we have what's called type. We have a curve to curve connection. We have a surface to surface connection. We also have a surface to curve connection. Now, this is um, allowing us to validate whether a curve touches a surface from edge to edge. Below that, we have two modes to analyze our connection. We have quick and full, and I'll show you the difference between the two here shortly. And you'll notice that I have five different ways under the quick to verify our surfaces are um, whether they're G0, G1, G2, G3, and then we also have a condition of overlap whether the edges actually overlap rather than just simply having a gap. We have our connection, what our minimum and maximum gaps are allowed. So what this will do is it will check everything between 0 and 0 0.078 inches. Now, if this were in millimeter, then my gap would be, let me change that right now. Go to Tools option. We'll go to Millimeter. Go back to my connect checker. So as you can see, now my maximum gap is set to two millimeters. And um, this is allowing me to check the distances of surfaces that could potentially be two millimeters away from one another. Um, I'm going to adjust this down and say, well, the maximum gap that I'm really looking for is going to be, say, 0 0.05. Or maybe I go back and adjust my, instead of 0 0.0, uh, seven, eight inches, I take that all the way down to, let's say, a thou, point zero zero one or half one thousandths, point zero 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 five, something along those lines. Because really, I want to make sure my edges are within that tolerance. Off to the side, we have ignore small free edges. Just that, if you have very tiny small free edges, it'll ignore those. And then you also have check boundaries of uh, internal edges. And this is important because in this case I have a single surface and what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm checking all the boundaries of all of that surface internally. And then down below are all my given information tidbits. So what I want to do is I want to check surface to surface connection. I'm going to select my surface and what you'll see here is little yellow flags that pop up. Now, these yellow flags are telling me something. In this case, I currently have this set to G3 continuity. And you'll also notice that the entire surface isn't highlighting. The reason why these are highlighting is because I know that there's an issue there because uh, at this point, I have a max deviation of 0.03. I have a max angular break of 0.378. I have a G2 deviation of almost 90 degrees, and I have a G3 deviation. My current analysis mode is set to G3. If I take this all the way to G0 and inspect this, you can see that I have a G0 angle break. So that's why this is only showing uh, a very small angle break. This is because uh, or or the G3. Um, break is because this is being recognized as two individual surfaces. I have not turned on internal edges. Once I turn on internal edges, what you're going to see is a whole lot more flare up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the G3 analysis so I can get a good look at really where all my G0 deviation breaks are, my G1 or tangency deviation breaks are, and I know pretty much everywhere on this thing G2 is broken. And we know G3 is broken. So this gives us a really good quick indication of the areas on the surface that are having positional 
and tangential issues. Now, if I turn on overlap, we can take a look, and you'll notice that there are no actual overlap issues because nothing showed up in green. So I'll go back to G0. I'll go back and turn on G1. Now, you'll also note that when I turn on multiple analysis modes, the actual deviation number disappears on screen. So if you want to see the actual deviation number on screen, make sure you only have one of the analysis modes turned on. Now, if I look at this, I'm telling this that everything above 0.17 degrees is out of tangency. So I'm allowing everything from 0.17 and smaller to be considered within my tangency range. I can change this and say 0, 0.0, for instance. Now, I'll have more area that is highlighting in yellow, indicating that I have a larger deviation, or, 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 or a smaller allowable deviation, more is being caught because of that smaller deviation value. I can do the same thing for G0. I'm going to turn this off, G1 off, turn G0 on. You'll notice I have a 0 0.015. Now I'm going to reduce this 0.005 to 0.001. Because typically that's my default modeling tolerance. And click again, and you'll notice nothing else really highlights. So the rest of this is pretty clean except for this one little area. And then we can see what our maximum deviation is down here as well. Now I'm going to go back to uh, my DV or analysis mode. I'm going to go to full. And now what full does is it shows us everything along all edges at all times. So with my G0 set, you'll notice that this is telling me, hey, I'm showing my zero, so on and so forth. Now, if I'm showing too much information, I can come down here and say, you know what, I don't care about the min info. All I want to see is the max info. Now, the max info is highlighting all of this information across the park. So it gets a little tricky to, be, to, to actually inspect and see what's going on. You have this what's called discretization, and what this allows me to do is refine the amount of analysis that's uh, taking place along those edges. This is picking fewer points along the edges to check. This is picking the maximum amount of points along those edges to verify as well. Now, if I come in here and change this to G1, you'll notice that G0 automatically turns off. If I take a long look at this and I inspect my model, you'll see that I have now a color scale that's displaying. And what this does is it gives me a range of deviations indicating where the, the reds and the magentas are the greatest amount of angle break and the blue is the least amount of angle break. If I want to see the actual color scale, I can take a look at the color scale. I'm going to auto min max this. And we can see the magenta is five degrees out, the reds are four and a half degrees out, and uh, four, four and a half, and then I have uh, three, two, one, all the way down to naught. If I want to, I can adjust the color scale. So if I don't like the magenta or I don't like the reds and I want to really see those, I can make them uh, different colors as well. I also have the ability to turn on a comb. And what the comb does is it will stick up a basically similar to the porcupine which we'll get into an analysis along that edge and the greater the deviation the longer that tooth or the longer that quill is on the on the actual part now this button is just to turn on and off the envelope curve as well this is the amplitude i can auto scale if i like to so right now the auto scale is or the auto scale is turned off and the amplitude is at 100. I can shrink this. And because I'm having a hard time seeing everything because of all of the flags, I can turn those flags off. And I can see a little bit better where my greatest deviations are at. Now this works the same way with curves. If I have two curves that are joining one another, I can pick those two curves. In this case, I have one single surface. If I have multiple surfaces, I can pick all the individual surfaces. Now, you'll notice that once I turned on the internal edges, it 
notifies me how many connections I have on those internal edges. And I have a total of 205 internal edges on that surface. So you'll also notice I have G2, I have G3, and I also have uh, the detect overlap defect as well. And this is a quick connect checker. There's a bit more that can be done with it. It's an exceptionally powerful tool. This is checking the true mathematical alignment of those edges. If you're interested in a deeper discussion on Connect Checker and more of what it can do, I will be doing podcasts related to um, the Connect Checker tool. And if you're interested, please feel free to email me and I will drop the information in the information tag down below to email if you are interested in a Connect Checker podcast. Thank you.